Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions uh, 95 to 99 of section 3 of the purple booklet. So this is a pretty complicated question about organic chemistry. Question 95 says, a secondary alcohol is produced by reacting a green ordre reagent with which um, aldehyde or ketone. So we're given three steps to a reaction, which I've copied out here. Um, you might be able to recognise this, you might have seen it before. Um, and a green ordre reagent is used um, quite a lot in pharmaceutical chemistry. The thing about this question is it really helps to understand what's happening in the steps that are given here, because then you can visualise what's actually happening um, if you were to use different reactants and what that would mean for the product. So really have a look at what the steps actually mean. Uh, and make sure you understand them before you try and understand the question. 95 asks which aldehyde or ketone would be used to produce a secondary alcohol. Now, knowing that a secondary alcohol is an OH group attached to a carbon, which in itself is attached to two carbons, it's a secondary alcohol, um, you might be able to tell that it can't be formaldehyde or methanol, because that only has one carbon atom in it, which means it would end up being a primary alcohol. With propanone, you'd end up with a tertiary alcohol. And so we know it's not going to be A, C, and certainly not D, which leaves us with B. And because there's two carbon atoms, and I've drawn out the different possibilities here, because there's two carbon atoms in this one, we get um, a position of the OH group, which allows it to be a secondary alcohol. So the answer for 95 is going to be B. 96 says, the reaction of 3-chlorohexane and propanol under the condition shown in figure one produces which alcohol? So this one could be a little bit hard to predict. Um, some people are just good at looking at it and sort of working it out, but I like to draw out the entire um, reaction. And for time, that can be a little bit tricky, but I'm just gonna go over quickly what would happen if you used um, 3-chlorohexane and propanol so you can see what's going on. So 3-chlorohexane is something that looks like this. So we're going to draw just in skeletal form uh, six carbon atoms and on the third we're going to add in uh, a chlorine atom. So that's three chlorohexane and it's going to react first of all in step one um, with magnesium under anhydrous ether and that's going to produce this structure where these are sort of bonded together. Then in step two, we have the magnesium compound reacting with our, um, in this case, propanol. So I'll draw that out here. So we've got our six carbons, our MgCl, and that's going to react with our propanol, which looks like this, um, double bond to the oxygen, each of these points representing one carbon atom. So these are going to react together and what we get is something that looks a bit like this. And I've just moved the position um, of this, I've flipped it over. If you imagine flipping it over on itself, like you're turning a page in a book, I just think it makes it easier to draw. And then the next thing we have is it reacts with hydrogen halide. And so then in step three, the final product we get is this molecule. So hopefully um, that has sort of simplified it in a way so you can see what the three steps are. And the name of this alcohol, you might already be able to guess it, um, but it's going to be 4-ethyl-3-heptanol, of course, with the ethyl group being on the, on the fourth carbon there. So the answer for this one is going to be A. I think the easiest way of answering this question is really just to put in the information you're given and see what the product you get out at the end is. It can be a little bit tricky to get it right first time, but hopefully that clarifies it a little bit. 97 says, a green art reagent is prepared from each of the first named compounds in the following pairs of organic molecules and reacted with the second named compound in the pair by the reaction shown in figure one. Which of the pairs produces the compound 5-bromo-2-pentanol? Now, that's a really oddly worded question, I think. And if we were to tackle that question like we tackled the last one, we'd have to do quite a lot of 
um, trial and error drawing really to work it all out. And in the interest of time, I don't think that's really the best um, way of tackling this question. Instead, get a really good understanding of how this works and use this as an example to help you visualize what sort of changes in the product you'd see if you change the reactants a little bit. The way I think of this question is if we're wanting a carbon chain that's five carbons long and we want to make sure that the bromine remains on one end of it. It's five bromo, right? Um, and we want the pentanol um, to have an OH group, two carbon atoms away from the other end. That's the way I think of it. So if we're looking at, this is a 97, we want five carbon atoms and we want a bromine grip on one bit and an OH in this position. So what combination of things would we get from that? Well, if we had a methyl bromide, we would guarantee that the bromine would end, um, would be at the end of the carbon chain. So methyl bromide looks like this. So whenever it is added on, um, we always end up with this carbon atom attached to the bromine at the very end of the chain. So that would work. If we were to look at 4-bromobutanol, why would that be useful? Well, on the that would allow us to have an OH group which forms um, on the fifth carbon atom. Sorry, I've drawn that in the wrong position. That's why I'm wrong there. 5-bromo-2-pentanol, um, well, that was right. So if we were to look at how 4 bromobutanol would cause this. You need to remember that butanol, of course, has four carbon atoms. And at the end of it, because it's an aldehyde, you have this double bond to the oxygen. And if we look at how that um, is similar to this example, where we use propanol, um, we can see how we'd end up with an OH group that's one carbon away, or in the second position from the end of the chain. That's the way I think of it. And so the answer for this one is going to be A. If you work it out with the first one, you don't need to look at the others. Um, but to rule them out, you might want to have a look at where the positions of the bromine and the OH group would end up. 98 then says, the alcohol shown below is to be reduced by a Grignard reagent reaction. If it's prepared from the first named compound, and this is then reacting to the second named compound, according to the steps in figure one, this alcohol could be produced from each of the following pairs of compounds except one. And so figure two is shown, I'll not draw it out. Um, so for this one again, it's just thinking about where the OH group is. Um, it's practically the same question as the one we had before, only instead of a, a bromine group, we're looking at an extra methyl group and the positions are both on the same carbon. So what does that tell us? Well, with the same logic as before, we know that we're going to be trying to react to get um, a long carbon chain that is going to be um, six carbons long as you can see in figure two. So if we did that with uh, a methane and a hexanone, for example, of course we would have that extra carbon for the methyl group on the side, um, but we would end up with the OH group being in a different position as you'd see in figure two. The same would be true if you were to have a look at option D, the position of the OH group wouldn't be the same. And so we can rule that one out. For B then, if we have a look at how two pentanone would work as opposed to three pentanone, we'd end up with an OH group on the second carbon as opposed to the third, which we're looking at here, which would be the same as the methyl group, as you can see in figure two. So that means that the answer to 98 is also going to be A. And finally, with 99, um, we're looking at the fourth step with hydrohalic acid to create a new alkyl halide. And this one's a little complicated because it talks about doing the same thing over and over again, talking about these cycles. So instead of drawing it out over and over, just think about, well, what changes are taking place from the start to the end? And what does that mean each time we do it? So if we were to repeat it, what sort of structures would we get? It's a lot quicker to think of it like that than to try and just draw it out four times because that can get a bit confusing. And if you make a mistake, you'll be going down the wrong path. And in this exam, obviously, you don't have very much time. So looking at the options we have here, I think fairly obviously we can rule out A being one straight uh, linear molecule. It's not, it's not going to happen, we can see in question 96, how branching can occur. Um, and if you're using um, 
well, the, the first thing, which is acetaldehyde, um, you're not going to expect it to be completely straight the entire way through. So you might expect some branching. And again, that's why we might want to rule out B. Um, we know that we're going to be um, using methyl bromide as the initial reactant, which means bromine is going to be, as we worked out in the last question and the one before, bromine is going to be on the terminal carbon at the end of the chain. It's not going to be in the centre, as you can see in B. So that means that C or D could be the answer. So we've talked about how branching is important, and they're both branched. We've talked about how bromine needs to be on a terminal carbon, and that's the case for both of these. So which one is it? Well, if you look at how the different groups attach in the first cycle, you can see that you wouldn't get this necessarily um, symmetrical and complex branching you see in D. It doesn't necessarily make that much sense. And if you were to do sort of um, back of the napkin calculation to try and work out how this branching would occur, you'd find it would be much more regular like you see in C. If you continued, of course, to do more, then you would get more complex branching, but with only three cycles, you wouldn't get anything more complicated than that. So that way, that's why the answer for 99, without having to do very much work, you can think of it as being C. So that was um, a set of fairly difficult questions. I think organic chemistry in this exam can be quite challenging, um, but that was questions 95 to 99. Um, I hope that helped clarify some of those things. So thanks for watching.